The recent release of multi-limpet controllers in Elite Dangerous offers a unique opportunity to go over limpets in general, or, for the purposes of this video, to highlight issues with limpets as they currently exist, and to make some suggestions as to how the mechanic can be improved. Most of this will be ground already tread by other members of the community over several years. It's my hope that by compressing this content into something concise, the odds of the issues being fixed will increase. As currently implemented, limpet drones function through two key systems, the blank limpets and the controllers that make them work. The blank limpet drone itself is purchased as cargo and treated as a physicalized commodity, though it isn't tradable and cannot interact with market supply and demand forces. For all intensive purposes, they function like ammo and hull repair systems at stations where the requisite materials to create them are simply conjured from whole cloth. There isn't much that we know about these drones and how they work in the game's lore, so we don't have any context for how or why this particular method of extravehicular interaction became popular. Nor do we have much detail about the thinking behind this mechanic, or the logic that brought it about. Essentially, Limpets function as single-use, blank-template, remote-controlled robots that can be readily programmed to carry out a number of different specialized roles, depending on need. The programming process is implied to be as much a physical event as it is a software one. Limpets are pulled from cargo, processed by the controller, and converted to fulfill a given role. Upon completion of their program task, or after a set period of time, the limpets self-destruct. They are also destroyed if their connection to the controller is severed, either by a loss of module power, collision with elements in the environment, or through actions taken by other ships. To be used effectively, a ship needs to equip the appropriate controller and bring enough limpets in their cargo bay for the task to be fulfilled. If a given task involves collecting resources, the total amount of limpets required can be dramatic. A typical mining ship needs to bring at least half its cargo hold capacity in blank lipids in order to be able to collect the resources created during mining operations. The core problems with this system involve several layers. The first is the general obtrusiveness of the mechanic itself. Management of limpet drones can be tedious, especially when a player overestimates the need for limpets and winds up ejecting spare blanks into space to make room for mining fragments. Since you still need limpets to mine, bringing too many often leads to several cycles of dumping extra limpets and clearing the onboard refinery. It interrupts gameplay in a truly aggravating process that I would compare to having your car's radio randomly lose all your channel presets and Bluetooth connections. In both cases, you have to stop what you're doing and fuss with your controls to get things working again. Limpet management during mining operations isn't much fun either, since collectors self-destruct constantly, and commanders have to continuously program and redeploy them. This process is also interruptive, albeit in a less obnoxious way than overfull cargo holds can be. And it's made even more so by the aggressive warnings that the controller fires off every time it runs out of valid limpet targets to collect. Limpet management across all controllers requires far too many button presses, imposes too many arbitrary restrictions, and fails to make very much sense from a practical standpoint. The limpet drones themselves can be readily retuned without needing to create any new assets in-game. A few tweaks to the UI and underlying modules could vastly improve the mechanic overall. The following are suggestions that would affect all limpets and controllers. First, give limpet controllers an internal ammunition reserve, one that scales with the size of the module and is at least equal to a controller's active limpet capacity. If a limpet is destroyed, the ammunition reserve can pull a blank from the cargo hold if needed, but each and every controller should have some storage of its own strictly reserved for limpets only. Second, eliminate the limpet self-destruct mechanic from all limpet controllers. Instead of a hard timer, limpets should run on fuel, which is restocked from the ship's reserve tank every time a limpet returns to its host ship. In the case of collector limpets, this fuel's reserve should be restocked every time a limpet docks to deposit something. Third, 
different collector grades should affect the rate at which fuel is consumed by the limpets themselves, the speed they fly, and the distance they're able to travel from a given ship. D-rated limpets being the slowest and most fuel efficient with the least range, B-rated being the best ranged and least fuel efficient, and A-rated being the fastest flying, with shorter range than a B-rated controller and slightly improved efficiency. Fourth, controllers should have a ready all mode, triggered from the module screen, from a fire group, or from a keystroke, which causes the controller to deploy and idle all its available limpets until the mode is disabled. If a limpet is destroyed while in this mode, the controller automatically releases a new one, if available from ammunition reserves. Fifth, all limpets should return after deployment for resupply. If their task is complete, they should dock with the ship and return to the controller's internal ammunition reserve to be reused later. Sixth, all limpet controllers should have a recall button, which will abort all active tasks and cause the drones to return to the ship immediately for storage. The idea behind these changes is to reduce the amount of time that a player has to spend managing limpets or controllers, reduce the need for players to purchase large amounts of limpets every time they return to a station, reduce the impact of blank limpets on ship jump range by eliminating the need for large limpet reserves, and allow for more active time engaged in core gameplay. These general changes would require adjustments to limpet logic, the related UI elements, and ship resources, but would be well worth the effort among the community. As many of the changes requested above have been expressed in varying forms for years, implementing these changes would bring a great deal of positive attention and goodwill from within the community, and it would reinforce the gameplay loops that the limpets tie into. The individual limpet classes could also use some adjustments. Many limpets work well as currently implemented, However, some of them in their current forms are considered irrelevant or too cumbersome for practical consideration by their intended user bases. Repair Limpets The repair limpet has needed significant attention for a long time. Its two principal issues are a repair capacity that is often too small to be practical, even at size 7, and limpet fragility that makes them useless in or near combat areas where they would be the most helpful. Engineering greatly diminished the relevance of repair limpets as holes got stronger. In my own gameplay, I've found that repairing large holes from a meager 90% hull can take more than 5 minutes. Practical considerations require the target ship to remain out of combat for the entire duration of the repair cycle, and for the reporting ship to remain constantly close by to instigate the next repair cycle. This most often translates to both ships remaining out of combat when the target ship needs significant repairs, and only when a station is not readily available. In many circumstances, repair cycles take so long to mend a severely damaged hull that a station 15 minutes away is less hassle. That means that most commanders with the opportunity to equip this module will pass on it, as the commanders they're likely to assist would rather go to a station than sit about and do nothing. These problems mean that repair limpets are typically used on exploration ships, where time to repair is more manageable, and combat interruption irrelevant. Few combat pilots I've interacted with bother with them, and while repair limpets do see some use cases in the AXI, I've rarely seen them used practically and never seen them relied upon extensively, as the only effective repair cases occur when large ships are fixing up smaller ones. The following are suggestions for improvement to the repair limpet controller. First, allow repair limpets to stack on a single target, thereby applying their repair capacity over a shorter period of time. Second, increase the resilience of repair limpets to incidental damage. Limpets should no longer fall off if the target suffers punitive damages. Repairs should instead be interrupted by incoming damage the same way that shield recharge cycles are. In effect, if a hull with repair limpets attached takes damage, this means that repair efforts are paused for a short period of time after each damage tick, and then resumed. Repair limpets should be available for direct targeting in flight and sub-targeting when latched onto a ship. They should retain their vulnerability to point defenses and ECM units. 
Third, repair limpets should move with the same speed and aggression as hatchbreaker limpets, increasing their practical use in combat situations. Fourth, while in ready all mode, repair limpets should automatically seek damaged wingships that pass into range and return to the host if that range is exceeded. Options should exist in the module panel to enable ready all mode. Fifth, repair limpets should unlatch and return to their host after a warning period if the repair target passes out of range of the host. The idea behind these changes are to reduce the number of clicks and interactions required to manage a repair limpet controller, to improve the value proposition of this module across all fields of gameplay, to strengthen the impact of support ships in all practical combat situations, to provide a meaningful player-driven alternative to station repair that keeps players engaged with core gameplay for longer, to impact the current combat meta by incentivizing the use of ECMs and point defenses to counteract repair limpets and suppress support ships. Taken together, these changes to the repair limpet controller would make it a far more powerful and more desirable module, providing a greater ease of engagement across combat, escort, exploration, and AX combat, increasing the time engaged with direct game activity and decreasing the time spent traveling to stations and fleet carriers for repairs, would help bring players back into the game and drive higher quality engagement across all game platforms. The Decontamination Limpet. This module should receive the same treatment and behavior tweaks as the Repair Limpet controller, with the added perk of being immune to destruction by caustic damage. All other limpet types should be made vulnerable to this damage and be destroyed by it on contact. Repair limpets that come into contact with a ship suffering caustic damage should be destroyed by caustic cross-contamination. The Collector Limpet. The concept behind this limpet and controller are sound, and the current implementation is solid, though like the other limpets, there are a few tweaks that need to be addressed. First, eliminate the No Valid Limpet Target warning on the Annunciator panel. Normal gameplay with this limpet controller, particularly when mining, results in the alert being spammed, which renders the underlying information behind that alert unreadable. I've detailed places where high aggression alerts can be displayed in my general commentary on UI tweaks. It's an older video, so I intend to revisit this topic at some point in the future. While in ready all mode, the collector limpet controller will keep its maximum limpet count deployed and will auto-deploy additional drones if the current ones are destroyed. These drones will automatically seek valid targets nearby at their reduced speed which should change based on the module grade as detailed above. Third, allow collectors to scoop loose containers from the surface of planets, ideally by changing their approach logic near the surface. They should move slowly enough to be trackable by ground targets and destroyed by small arms fire. The Hatchbreaker Limpet. I would like to see a combat ecosystem that requires target shields to be disabled before a hatchbreaker can latch on though that statement means a bunch of mechanics unrelated to limpets need attention before altering the hatchbreaker contributes anything to the piracy loop. The ideal hatchbreaker as a tool reads like something used on a disabled ship. It's unfortunate that current mechanics in ship combat make this unapproachably difficult against players and cumbersome to the point of impractical against NPCs. As I've detailed in other videos, you will typically lose between one-third and two-thirds of all cargo dropped by an uncooperative target, and there's no meaningful way to prevent this. The Recon Limpet. Basically a hatchbreaker for data caches, even to the point of releasing shipping containers full of said data instead of just emptying a cargo hold, though it's made more difficult to use on account of the lower speed and limited valid targets that this limpet can attack. Recon limpets are currently only relevant around superships, and some rare Horizons era ground settlements. The Recon limpet offers very limited and highly specialized gameplay, but with an intriguing underlying concept. There's a ton of potential for additional gameplay, particularly surrounding hacking, which has been severely underdeveloped as a whole in Elite Dangerous. 
I can see this limpet breaching certain types of targets automatically. From a depth perspective, there is an opportunity here for hacking minigames similar to the ones that we use to mine ore. If this limpet is intended to infiltrate computer networks and steal data, then the reward it recovers should be data, and not some abstract commodity canister filled with data. Though this touches on improvements to trade mechanics and material storage, which I intend to cover in greater detail separately. For now, there isn't all that much I can recommend here without chasing the rabbit through several game systems that would need attention first. So I don't have anything more to say on this limpet. The Research Limpet. Here we have another limpet that works like a hatchbreaker, this time latching onto a Thargoid ship or a few rare and select types of Lagrange-based life. If successful, the research limpet generates a tissue sample commodity, which can be worth about as much as a unit of painite in the right market and under the right conditions. Tissue samples are generally not worth the effort outside of a Ramtom mission, and have been largely irrelevant in casual gameplay for years. This could be fixed by allowing the research limpet to interact with more objects that already exist in the game. Though implementing a fix like this would require programming in interaction points to existing assets which is a potentially significant update to major game subsystems. Allowing limpets to interact with ground targets could increase the number of usable cases, though, again, requiring a lot of gameplay and testing that probably isn't in the pipeline anytime soon. So, for now, there isn't anything I can recommend for the same reasons as described with the Recon Limpet. The Fuel Transfer Limpet this thing is so niche and so specialized that unless you're a fuel rat, you'll probably never need or use it in practical gameplay. Opportunities to engage in NPC-based rescue are very uncommon, despite salvage and rescue being important enough to have a dedicated NPC asset. This is another case where recommendations for improvement are directed towards the gameplay loop and not the limpet itself, so we'll save them for a dedicated video on rescue mechanics. The Prospector Limpet the core gameplay and intention here is stellar. It's one of the best functioning limpets in the entire game. Aside from the general limpet improvements detailed previously, there isn't much I can recommend here. This was a good idea, and it was implemented very well. Multi-limpet controllers. These things got their own dedicated video a couple weeks back, but I wanted to give them another short pass here because the fundamental implementation feels rushed. Baking functionality into multi-limpets as a quick way to get them in the game is a good way to get telemetry and build some key back-end changes. But the choice and pairing of limpet types within these modules, as well as the core module attributes, feels arbitrary. The master limpet concept originally suggested on the ED forums years ago remains my favorite baseline for implementing a multi-limpet controller. In this module, you would purchase a core limpet controller with a number of open slots into which the actual limpet functions can be assigned. This would work in a similar way to the fighter and SRV hangers, where limpet functions are assigned to open bays on the controller, and the number of bays available increases with module size. This would give players more control over layouts, rather than relying on fixed limpet attributes that have been, at least so far, very hit and miss. In the spirit of providing additional feedback, I want to take the time to suggest additional limpet controllers that could help fill in the gaps in some gameplay loops that have been left open. The Recovery Limpet. This theoretical limpet is intended to address issues with piracy, but offers use cases for rescue operations and salvage. If a target ship is disabled, it will likely drift away too quickly for the cargo to be effectively recovered. Repeated use of the Hatchbreaker Limpet in these situations results in cargo being scattered uncontrollably at speeds too high for effective recovery, and with spreading trajectories too broad for all containers to be gathered before drifting out of range. The recovery limpet allows for this problem to be corrected by attaching to a disabled or drifting ship and bringing it to a relativistic stop, with the ship deploying the limpet used as a point of reference. This could be accomplished and implemented quickly, by allowing the recovery limpet to repair a target ship's thrusters to 1%, forcing its flight assist on, and locking its throttle position at 0%, while the limpet remains attached. More complex implementations could allow recovery limpets to attach to thruster ports on a target ship, 
effectively replacing them, and enabling said ship to be towed in formation behind the vessel which deployed the recovery limpet. This would allow for rescue scenarios where gravity could create additional unworkable complexity, such as when rescuing a ship in freefall over a planet, or when recovering a ship crashed on a planetary surface. Limpets like this could also be used to extract surface vehicles without landing, by allowing them to attach to SRVs and to pull them into the air, dragging them into position underneath a ship for recovery in flight at low altitude and within a certain speed threshold. The Field Maintenance Limpet As the name suggests, this limpet would repair modules instead of hulls, where the user could direct a field maintenance limpet by sub-targeting the module on a target needing repair. If no sub-target is selected, the field maintenance limpet will repair the ship's superstructure, and then distribute its repair capacity to ship modules in order of greatest damage. As suggested for the repair limpet, the field maintenance limpet's ready all mode will cause it to roam to the nearest valid ally or wing ship, but only if valid module scans are available. The resupply limpet. Mechanics here would be more complicated, but the idea is to provide a way by which one ship can give ammunition for weapons, commodities, or other physical goods to another ship, without the need for the receiving ship to deploy its own collectors. This limpet would have to be conditional on FDEV opting to physicalize ammunition as a tradable commodity on the game's markets, where it would be possible for ships to buy plasma, kinetic, or missile rack ammo, and consume it from storage in their cargo holds when a given weapon runs out of ammo. Physicalized ship consumable resources like this are a much broader topic that I intend to cover in detail separately, but I wanted to indicate the limpet component here as a teaser for things I can make in the future. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you guys later.